Thank you for listening to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. So I want to go back to the, this question that I don't think we, we fully answered. Uh, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned examples, but how do we go about um, explaining the hard thing? I know you mentioned examples and you mentioned the addiction thing. How would you go about teaching someone, let's say, separation anxiety? What would be kind of your, your stage-by-stage approach? Okay. There's a young dog trainer listening. Okay, so from. it would start with a serious decompression period. Mm-hmm. And when I mean decompression, I mean that dog is in that crate pretty much 23 and a half hours a day, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You're hand feeding for eye contact through, it's just whether it's one second or three seconds, just one eye contact, boom, mm-hmm. one piece of food. You can leave the water bowl in there, right? Mm-hmm. The dog only comes out to go potty. Whether that's a three-day decompression period or a seven-day decompression period, if it's an intense case, mm-hmm. generally that, that craziness that's happening in the crate starts to go get lower and lower. Mm-hmm. And then what I do is we start to implement snail, snails-paced mm-hmm. walks. Mm-hmm. So you could see on my stories yesterday, I just had a walk and literally we are walking like the dog could basically sit and then stand between every single step. Okay. Right. And it's gotta be a 45 minute walk. Now it could seem outrageous, Mm -hmm. but it, the thing with separation anxiety is usually the dog is so smart that it's overthinking every single thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So if we just slow their mind down, Mm -hmm. amazing things happen. Mm -hmm. Right. That goes, so it goes from going to those snail paced walks to adding play stay. Now, if you're struggling with separation anxiety, I don't think there's enough play state time in the world that you could do, mm-hmm. right? If you could get 12 hours, wonderful. It's, it's a nice place for that dog to cope without you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a situation where it's, all, it's always dependent on the owner. Right. Mm-hmm. So you can start off with that decompression period. And if it's not working out, we have to make changes here or mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. But generally, what would, what would not working out in that decompression period look like? People slipping up and giving affection. Oh, they, they're right. They're, they're, it's yeah, it's they're generally the owners are doing yeah. something. They're baby talking their dog, mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. Really, I just want, and you know, I'm not really, I don't do board and trains. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm not a big fan of them. Right. But, right, right, right. but to each their own. But right. the one time that it is a good time is with a board and train to yep. get the owner the hell away from that. hundred percent. Right. Yeah. It's the, the struggle is I, I have these base rules for, for dogs with behavioral issues. And this goes for um, separation anxiety as well. And, and it starts with number one duration work. I don't care if it's a sit stay. I don't care if it's a down stay, but we are looking to get four to six hours a day. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Number two, it starts with, it's the crate. So, whether at first the dog's in the crate 23 and a half hours, it's the, the time, the game plan is the dog is in the crate or it's on a leash in place stay mm-hmm. for the next two weeks, mm-hmm. right? No choices are made, mm-hmm. right? I, if you can only get play stay in for two hours, that means your dog is in the crate 21 hours, mm-hmm. right? 22 hours. Mm-hmm. From there, we start to escalate. I want to break everything down and then we start to add the walks. We start mm-hmm. to add, and the walks are literally two 30 minute for separation anxiety. If it's just a behavior, I want five minute walks at first. Mm-hmm. Right. But for separation anxiety, we do have to get that energy out. Mm-hmm. Right. So number one duration, number two, crate number three is earning. So earning that food. I don't care about sits downs. I don't care about any of that stuff. All I care about is getting eye contact. So it doesn't matter if we're in the backyard walking around, stopping and the dog gives you three seconds of eye contact, boom, one mm-hmm. piece of food. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass for a big dog, but for a small dog, it's fairly easy. I don't care if it's a situation where you have the dog jump on your bed, give you three seconds of eye contact, one piece of food, mm-hmm. but it's one piece mm-hmm. of food for every three seconds of eye contact. Mm-hmm. You want to do more? go towards five seconds, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. From there, I talk about affection. And really, I want people to stop touching their dogs. When it comes to separation anxiety, generally affection is the The root of all evil. The the root of all evil. The biggest threat. So whether that is a two-week or a two-month situation with no affection, it is what it is, but Mm -hmm. we need to stop that affection. And then what I tell them is that affection has to come Here's another analogy for you. This is the Uncle Jimmy analogy. So if you had a 14-year-old daughter, Mm -hmm. how long is it acceptable for Uncle Jimmy to give her a hug at a greeting? Mm -hmm. What? One to three seconds, right? So 
when it comes to affection in your dog, after we get through that reset period of no choice, right? And no affection, it's earned affection for doing something right at two to three second increments, mm -hmm. right? So food, affection, no toys are left out. You can leave one bone in, in, the, in the crate. That's the only thing free in that dog's life. And then part of earning is freedom. Mm -hmm. Freedom is not coming for six months when it comes to a separation and right, 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 in right. my opinion. Right. Now I have had, I will bring up a story. I've had a dog, uh, a rescue dog that I kept for seven months. The dog was, I mean, bad, hurting itself, chewing off its, wow. just chewing everything, wow. right? Just really destroying itself. And I stopped all affection, all talking to this dog for seven months. Its life was literally the crate for 20 hours, play stay for three hours a day. And then our two walks a day and earning food and that dog's separation anxiety disappeared and has not come back, right? Wow. Just by stopping the affection. Rule four is the two walks a day. It can't be one walk. It has to be two. And when it comes to separation anxiety, it is 30 minute walks Never. twice a day, Never. right? Yeah. And, and the whole thing is I really want to drain that dog mentally because if we can drain that dog mentally, we can, we can manipulate the body in any way we see fit, right? right? right. Now, I do make it a, a serious point to these people. It can't be a situation where on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, you're walking two hours, right? Because then you're building up endurance in your dog and you're gonna have issues on your days off. Mm -hmm. So if it's 30 minute walks twice a day, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's not changing to an hour long walk the, mm -hmm. on one random day, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And then I get into rule five, which is uh, games right? So making yourself valuable, making that dog use its mind. So we'll go into scent work. So, cause you know, that yeah. mental stimulation, yeah. and I don't care. You could play the scent work game. I call it the go find a game mm -hmm. as much as you want. You want to play for two hours a day. Wonderful. Play that game. Mm -hmm. But, but it's the last thing that that dog earns a day. It has to have finished the first four rules before it can earn that game. Right. Okay. Right. I like to have fetch for 10 minutes a day. And I literally follow Ivan's advice. You just make it happen. I don't care if it takes three weeks of you chasing that ball and making it the most fun. You can't pretend, right? I add, as long as the dog is not biting people, I add tug of war, right? And I just, it starts off the first two weeks of the tug of war. I'm just playing. I let the dog win. It brings it back. We start playing again, bring it back. After two weeks, we start to implement the out command. Mm -hmm. When the dog outs, we put it right back. I think a lot of people make the mistake of taking the, the tug away for too long, whether it's three to seven seconds or a minute. You, it's just not, it's too long. Yeah. You put it right back in, you let the dog win, it brings it back out, and it's just yeah. this, this cycle, yep. okay? Yep. And then it eventually turns into, whether it's a month and a half or two months later, where it's place, come, attack, out, down, bang, right? right? <laughs> what, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. You, you, it turns into this fun game of tug, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I, with my dogs, I say attack, guard, attack, yeah. guard, and it, it just works for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last it game- sounds fucking sweet, by the way. It, it is. Sounds cool. It, it is. And it's, <laughs> the whole thing is, you know, is your dog fulfilled? I always ask people yeah, that have yeah. behavioral issues, like what, like, what is your dog's life like? And, and they always say that the dog's purpose is to give them affection yeah. and it's like yeah, yeah, your yeah. dog is so much more yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like yes this program mm -hmm. is pretty intense mm -hmm. right it's mm -hmm. it can seem downright harsh on the dog yeah. but I, there is one more game is I, I play the hide and go seek game yeah. Yeah. so it just starts as a yeah it just starts as a game of affection but it can't this game can't come in until we've got through the reset period right. whether right. the reset's two weeks or a month yeah. right the dog doesn't value the affection he's not gonna yes and right. the whole thing is it starts off as just yes, two people, or you're doing play, stay, and come, or whatever. But if you have multiple people, it turns into come, the dog comes to you, you're giving affection. And as you're giving affection, the other person goes and hides, yep, 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 right? Yep. The other person goes and hides. And when they call, the person giving affection stops, crosses their arms, looks away, yep, yep, right? Yep. And then the dog's like, Where'd that person go? yes. And then we, it's not like we're going, woo, 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 the whole time. It's, you'll go, give the dog 15 seconds to figure it out. Wait, yeah, Woo! right, whatever. And then they go and find you. And as they go and find that new person, the person given affection goes to a new spot. Mm, and then calls. Yes, yeah, and yeah. it becomes this very fun game. I, I have found that this program uh, for, the, for behavioral cases has done wonders in rehabilitation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it, and it's not that I have to see these people a hundred times. Generally speaking, 
I need to see them two or three times unless we're dealing with something mm. severe, right? right? right, right, right. Uh, a management case, right, right, right. right? But that's generally my game plan. And I feel like that for, for behavior, not when it comes to easy peasy dogs, yeah, obedience, whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But when we're talking about behavior, that's my game plan, right? right? And we may have to adjust some of the games, right? Mm -hmm. But that scent work thing, the dogs love it. And then you're fulfilling your dog. And, yeah. and the whole thing is, yes, it's really strict for six months. And it seems like a lot of work. But you know, you take on the responsibility of the dog. I think it's only right to give it exactly what it needs. Right? right? right. And, and really, those rules right there, I think every dog deserves. Right? right? right. Now, I will say in time, you can play the go find a game all day, you can play fetch all day you can play tug all day you can give the dog some free time free time in in time but i think that that game plan at least gives your dog some purpose in life right. at the beginning people go too long with fetch too long with tug mm -hmm. of war mm -hmm. and we want it to be scarce and valuable because if it's valuable you become valuable yes right? and, and when it comes to behavior you want your dog looking to you for guidance instead of making a decision mm -hmm. because when you're dealing with behavior the problem is the dog can't make the wrong decision or they can't make the right decision. So take away that choice and let the dog thrive. Thank you for listening to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. We really hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we hope to see you back for the next one. But in the meantime, please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Dog Trainers Podcast. Go ahead and leave a comment. Ask us any questions that you want. We would love to connect with our dog trainer communities all around the world. Take care, guys. We'll see you next time.